Imagine you are a real estate agent, you got a client, client son is there, you're showing a property, that's your job. And cops pull guns on you because neighbors think black people, nice house, must be robbing the place. That's exactly what happened to a black real estate agent, his client and the client's teenage son. They were handcuffed, they were held at gunpoint during the showing of a Michigan home on Sunday, August 1st. After a neighbor called 911 to report a break in. Here's a picture of the victims, Brown and Roy Thorne. They're the victims here. Realtor Eric Brown and his client Roy Thorne were at a home with Thorne's 15 year old son. What a hell of a lesson to learn for a 15 year old child. When they noticed a growing police presence outside the house. The men say officers were pointing guns at the house and ordered them to exit the home single file with their hands raised. Brown, Thorne um, and his son were held at gunpoint until they were placed in handcuffs. After Brown showed his credentials, proving that he was a realtor showing the home, Wyoming officers apologized and let the trio go. They provided an explanation and here it is. Police said they were responding to a neighbor's 911 call and have defended officers actions saying proper protocol was followed. The Wyoming Department of Public Safety takes emergency calls such as this seriously and officers rely on their training and department policy in their response. Captain Timothy Pohl said the race didn't play a role in the incident. The department was responding to a call for service. There wasn't a racist element. But here's what you may want to do. If somebody calls 911 and says, hey, people are breaking into this home. Maybe you ask a few questions like, um, is the home occupied at the moment? Is this home for sale? Could it be a real estate agent? How do you know they're breaking into the home? Did you see forced entry? Simple questions. Um, Brown said he uh, would have been treated differently if he were white. Um, I agree with them and express concern about showing homes in the future if people will see him and call the police on a whim again. And I am, am I just automatically the criminal? Because that's pretty much how we were treated in that situation. That officer came back and apologized again, but at the same time, the damage is done. My son was a little disturbed. He hasn't seen anything like that. He's not going to forget this. And let me correct the record, sir. I work with young people. Your son is not a little bit disturbed. He's really disturbed. He may not express to you verbally how disturbed he is. It may come out in other ways. Uh, doctor, you got some background with this? Yeah, I mean, a couple things. Of course, you know, this is implicit bias 101, yeah. right? You know, you see somebody's skin color, you assume. Um, and, and the reason this story has so much valence is because it links to other stories that even have worse outcomes than this. You know, a young black man goes jogging through a neighborhood. Do you assume he's a, a burglar and, and citizens shoot him or police find? So, in a way, this story is given so much weight because it ties into so many other stories that have horrible outcomes like this or much worse outcomes. Um, again, I'll just say it as my final point that we're in a moment now where everything is up for grabs. We're in a very existential urban or urgent moment. And this is a time for us to highlight and call attention to these kind of stories and for the betterment of our of everyone really change change society. Really that's that's the that's the lesson of the aftermath of uh, uh, of the you know of the murder of George Floyd. That's the aftermath of what we're learning in the pandemic, which is believe it or not if we create a more equitable society, if we close the racial wealth gap, if we yep. create health equity, society is gonna work better for, for all of us. And then stories like this are gonna be the exception and not the rule.